we need to talk about your pack weight. What's going on guys? My name is JK and this is JK is Hiking where I'm all about hiking, backpacking, and gear. And today I want to talk to you about a problem that plagues every one of us when we first start backpacking. And that's simply getting that pack weight down. There's two ways that we can tackle this. One is we can talk about all the expensive stuff that you're going to have to get in order to replace some of that weight. The other is to look at some budget options. Some ways that are very inexpensive that can save you a lot of weight in your backpack. The first time we all start backpacking, we try to bring everything we can. And one thing that we do when it's really cold outside is we bring a big heavy jacket because we don't want to freeze. And so we bring the, the best thing we can find. And a lot of times it's something like this that is uh, made almost like a canvas type material or a denim. Um, it's insulated on the inside. It might have a hood on it. But these things are heavy. This jacket alone probably weighs two or three pounds. I want to say that if you're willing to put out a little bit of money, one of the ways you can fix that easily is by picking up some kind of a puffy jacket. This is my Patagonia Nano Puff jacket. I've been using this now for roughly a year and the jacket is great. Instead of two pounds, it weighs in right around 11 ounces. So you're seeing a huge amount of weight reduction just by getting this jacket. Now there are even lighter options if you're willing to fork out even more money. Uh, you've got the Ghost Whisper jackets that weigh in at seven or eight ounces. They're super lightweight and it can take a lot of the weight off of your body when you're trying to backpack. Also when you're out and it's going to be raining, you want to have a raincoat with you. And I've got this great jacket right here. This is a Patagonia jacket. Um, this is the Torrent Shell Raincoat. It's a great jacket. It weighs in right around 11 or 12 ounces. Uh, super lightweight, very comfortable, has pit zips and everything. But as the weather gets colder, this jacket's a little heavy. And if I can, if I can do it, I'd like to take the weight down in this. And so how I do that is by bringing my Outdoor Research Helium 2 jacket. This one doesn't have the pit zips in it, um, but this thing only weighs in at about seven or eight ounces. It's super lightweight, it's very comfortable, uh, easy to pack away, and for a few extra dollars, you can get something like this that's gonna take about a half a pound out of your pack. When you think about a sleeping bag, most of the times, it's something like this. These things can weigh as much as five, six, seven pounds. They're heavy, they're bulky, they take up a ton of room. I don't even know how you fit something like this in a backpack, but I've gone out with people where this is the backpack they take with them when they go out. You can buy these at Walmart, you can buy them at like a Dick's Sporting Goods, but these things weigh so much. Instead, you can get online and you can find yourself a really nice down sleeping bag or a down quilt. I personally like quilts because the quilts take out the back section of the sleeping bag. Because the truth is, when you lay on down and you flatten it, it has no insulating qualities at all. You're basically sitting on fabric at that point, and it has no purpose. A quilt is great because it wraps around you where it needs to be wrapped around, and your, your pad actually gives you all the insulation you need to stay warm. And if you can get your hands on a nice down sleeping bag or a down quilt, you can take this whole five to six pounds of, of weight and drop it down to under a pound. It is expensive, but again, this is the expensive list. We'll get into the other list in just a second. Another thing that you can definitely shed some weight on is your tent. When I started backpacking, the tent that I carried with me was the Eureka Midori Solo. The uh, tent weighs in right around three pounds and 10 ounces. Not a heavy tent by average backpacking standards, but if you're an ultralight person, you're thinking that is way too heavy. And even for some lightweight people, they would think that's a heavy tent to be carrying around. Instead, I switched over to the Big Agnes Fly Creek HVUL2. I went from a tent that weighed three pounds and 10 ounces to a tent that weighed one pound and 15 ounces, basically shaving almost two pounds just off of my tent weight. Now there did come with a price. The uh, Midori Solo sold for right around $115 at the time. And my 
Big Agnes Fly Creek came in at around $290. You're looking at more than double the money to get the lighter weight, but like I said, this is the expensive stuff. So it is gonna cost you a little bit more, but it will definitely make your back feel a whole lot better. Now let's get on to the budget items. If you're trying to save a few bucks, but you still wanna lighten your load a little bit, there are a lot of ways you can do it. And one of the best ways you can do that is by getting rid of these things. This is a stuff sack, a waterproof stuff sack uh, with a roll top on it that you can uh, protect your gear with. These are great, they're nice, um, they don't weigh a whole lot, but if you're just trying to start shaving ounces, you're trying to just save weight wherever you can, one of the best things that you can do is move to Ziploc bags. These things weigh in at just under an ounce. It holds a gallon worth of gear, and it's waterproof. It's a waterproof sack that weighs less than an ounce that can hold a gallon's worth of gear in it. It's a simple way to save a little bit of money and to save just a few ounces out of your pack. For me personally, I carry a lot of my gear in one of these bags. Uh, I make sure that my toiletries, my poop kit, it's all in one of these bags. My medical kit is in a smaller Ziploc style bag for the same reason. They do the job well, they're waterproof, and they're extremely lightweight. If you're trying to cut some weight, dump the stuff sacks and just get a lot of Ziplocs. A lot of times when we get out into the back country, we see it as our opportunity to be survivor man. And I'm talking about us guys. We look at the outdoors as an opportunity to prove just how manly we can be. And sometimes we can take that a little too far. We'll take huge amounts of gear with us, toolkits. I've seen guys take small toolkits with them because they weren't sure if they'd need them. The truth is you don't. When you're going on a weekend backpacking trip, you'd be amazed by the things you don't need when you're out there. One of the things that I've seen a lot of guys bring with them when they go out are these little multi-tools. They're nice. I mean, they're really great. You've got a pair of pliers. There's a knife, a screwdriver. There's all these great things inside here, even a little tiny saw that you can use. But it's really unnecessary when you're out. What's better to take? Just a basic knife. I know a lot of guys take out the Kershaw or Benchmade knives. The truth is, this isn't really something you need when you're out in the back country. Yeah, could it be useful? Absolutely, but you really don't need it. And it's gonna be a lot heavier than just taking a simple knife. For me personally, I try to shave a few ounces there and I bring one of these Swiss Army knives. This is just a little tiny Swiss Army knife. It was given to me as a gift 20 years ago. It has a pair of scissors in it, a nail file knife, a toothpick, a pair of tweezers. It's very simple to use and it weighs like an ounce. So everything I need to do with this, I can do. As a matter of fact, I went out backpacking with Jason Wall a few weeks ago. He served a steak and this cut through that steak like a warm knife through butter. I think I shocked him with how good this little knife is. A big way that you can shave a ton of weight out of your backpack is better understanding how hydration works. Just like everybody else, when I started backpacking, the first thing I did is I went out and I got one of these guys. This is just a simple three liter water bladder. And yes, you heard that right, three liters of water. This thing is massive. I thought, if I'm gonna go out, I wanna take as much water as I can so I never go thirsty and so that I never have any problems with hydration. Needless to say, this thing is overkill. For one, it's really heavy. It's got plastic backing on it that's hard. It's a little bit heavy. Uh, this, this knob on the top, heavy also. You've got all this tubing. The tubing is not lightweight. Um, you compare this to a lot of other things that you could carry water in, and this is just a simple, heavy option. So I stopped using this, and then I simply moved to a Nalgene bottle. I started using an Nalgene bottle when I would go out. I even had a little koozie with a zipper on it that I could put this in so if it was cold outside, I could keep my bottle warm or I could keep it cold in the summertime. Whatever it was I wanted to do with this Nalgene bottle, that's what I did. And so I would take this out with me. It's a simple one liter bottle. But this thing too is even a little heavy for what I really want to carry. These are heavier than I really need to be carrying if I'm going to be carrying water. Also, they're really bulky and uh, take up a lot of space. And so I decided instead of using these, I would do what pretty much everybody else in the backpacking community now does with their water. And I'm bringing smart water bottles. 
These things are super lightweight. This carries the same amount of water that that Nalgene bottle carried, but it's a little slimmer, so it's a little easier to fit into the side of your backpack. They're great because they got this nice flip top where you can easily access your water anytime. They're cheap. These are the cheapest bottles you can buy because you just buy a bottle of water and you keep the bottle. Uh, I probably have six or seven of these things. So when my friends wanna go out and they bring those Nalgene bottles, I can say, here, give me that and let me give you one of these and you're gonna thank me later. Another thing about hydration that people don't always think about is the fact that you don't wanna to take too much water because it gets really heavy. So instead of bringing three liters of water, setting it on my back, where it's gonna be moving a lot, it's gonna be sloshing up and down, it's gonna shift the weight on my back, it's gonna be uncomfortable. Instead of bringing that with me, I'll bring a one liter bottle and another 24 ounce bottle with me. And I'll just take that water with me because when you're out in the back country and there's a lot of water around you, whether it's lakes, streams, creeks, rivers, whatever it is, you can always filter your water. This is my Sawyer squeeze that I use when I go out in my backpacking trips. I always take the Sawyer squeeze. I checked out the Hydro Blue filter it wasn't really working for me. I wasn't crazy about the flow rate and mine actually stopped working after a while. Uh, I thought about trying the Sawyer Micro, but then after watching all the videos I've seen on that, I'm just staying away from that altogether. This little guy right here only weighs a couple ounces and it is a fantastic water filter. If you're going out in the back country, instead of taking three liters of water with you and adding pounds and pounds and pounds to your backpack, Take a couple bottles and bring a filter with you and filter your water as you go. Not only that, my personal opinion is filtered water coming out of a creek or stream tastes far better than anything that's gonna come out of a faucet at your house. Have you ever been walking through your local sporting goods store or uh, camping outfitter and, and you saw bags like this sitting out? This is just a simple um, adventure medical kits, dry flex, backpacking medical kit. When I bought this, I took it out on the trail with me. And when I got it out on the trail, I realized I didn't need most of what was inside of this. So I brought it home, I pared it down to the very essentials, the things I knew I would need when I go out on the trail and a couple emergency items just to be safe. If you wanna find out more about what's in this medical kit, just click on this card up here and it'll take you to the video I did on my medical kit where you'll be able to see everything that's inside of this. I promise you, if you just go through your medical kit, you can pair some things out of there that aren't gonna weigh you down when you're out on the trail. Another area where you're gonna have to figure out how to shave some weight is in the area of electronics. We all like to take cameras and we take maybe a smartwatch or our smartphones with us when we go out on the trail. And one of the things that we like to do is make sure we have battery power to charge those items. Being a YouTuber, I take out cameras with me. I usually have my phone, I have a GoPro with me, and I have a DSLR that I use when I'm out on the trail. And so I need extra battery power to be able to charge all my different items that I have. But if you're just going out with friends and you're just using your phone to take some pictures, this is just too big. This is a 20,000 milliamp anchor battery charger. And I have taken this thing out on many trips. It's fantastic. When I went on the Shell Toey Trace, I took this out with me and it lasted me five days before I even needed to consider charging this thing again. So if you're going out for a two day backpacking trip, this is overkill, especially if all you're doing is taking out a phone. Instead, maybe you can take out something like this. This is a 10,000 milliamp anchor charger. I really like the anchor chargers. They're durable and they get the job done. This is obviously half the weight of the other charger I just showed you, but it's still a little too much power if all you're gonna do is take a phone with you when you go out into the back country. You can actually find smaller chargers that are 5,000 milliamps, 2,000 milliamps, that are about the size of a small thumb drive. And you can take those out with you into the backcountry and there's plenty of power to charge your phone for an overnight trip or even for a two night trip if you put your phone in airplane mode during the day. It's just a really simple way that you can drop your weight in your pack but still have the juice you need to charge your items. One of the big things that a lot of people take out with them when they go pack packing is way too much food. As a matter of fact, I just talked about this not too long ago with myself when I talked about the beginner backpacking mistakes that I made. 
You can check that video out in this card right up here. But for me, I like to eat. And because I like to eat, my eyes are actually bigger than my stomach. And when I get out on the trail, I bring way too much food. It's something I still struggle with. If you can figure out a way to bring only the food that you're gonna eat, you'll be surprised how much weight you'll save. The first time I went out on a multi-day backpacking trip, I took 10 pounds of food with me. 10 pounds for four days. The average weight for your food on a typical backpacking day should be about a pound. I was taking two and a half pounds of food a day for my backpacking trips. If you wanna find a really easy way and a budget way that you can save a little bit of weight, know the food you need to take out with you when you go on the trail and only take that food. If you know how many snacks you wanna eat, bring those. If you know how much food you're gonna eat for your meals, bring that. But don't bring emergency food, you won't eat it. Don't bring extra thinking, well, I might get really hungry. The truth is, and maybe it's just me, but when I get out backpacking and when I get out on a trail, by the end of the day, I'm hungry, but I'm not ready to eat everything in sight. That's something that comes for through hikers when they've been backpacking for a few weeks or even a few months, they get what they call hiker hunger and they can eat everything in sight. But that's over multiple days and weeks and potentially months of, of backpacking. If you're just doing weekend trips, pare down the food. I promise you, your back will appreciate it. And the last thing that you can do to protect your back when you're out on the trail is quit bringing so many clothes. I just went backpacking with a buddy of mine a couple weeks ago and I was helping him get his backpack together and he brought so many clothes. We were simply doing an overnight backpacking trip. He brought four pairs of socks, he brought sweatshirts, he brought extra pants, extra shorts, extra underwear. He brought all these extra clothing items that he simply didn't need. When I go out, I typically wear running shorts and those running shorts have a built-in liner that makes it so I don't even have to bring underwear with me when I'm out on the trail. I simply use that liner. And then at night, I might switch into a separate pair of shorts. If it's really hot outside and I know I've been sweating a lot, I'll bring maybe one extra shirt and I'll bring an extra pair of socks when I go out. I'm not a person who sleeps in socks at night. So for me, if I have a pair of socks that I can change out into in the morning, so I have clean socks, I'll do that. But typically, that's about it for me on extra clothing. If it's really cold out, I might bring some tights that I can wear under my shorts just to keep my legs warm and a puffy jacket. But typically, I don't bring a lot of warm clothing with me unless it's cold outside. I can sleep in 65 degree weather inside of my tent or my hammock with a nice quilt over me and I don't need the extra clothing. I promise you, whatever extra clothing you're bringing with you when you go backpacking, dump half of it, if not most of it, because you're probably not going to need it. So how do you shave weight out of your backpack when you're out on trips? Drop those down in the comments below and let me know what you guys think. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so anytime one of these videos drops, you know about it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found value in it. If you did, give me the thumbs up. If you didn't, drop the thumbs down. I don't take it personally. We can still be friends. So until next time, stay strong, hike long, and we'll catch you on the next go-around. That makes no sense. Again, it's not a backpack at all. Now I'm, now I'm questioning myself. I hate that when I'm questioning myself. For some reason, I'm thinking it's Crenshaw, but I think it's like a street name in New York or something. I obviously can't pronounce Swiss Army Knife. I call it a Salvation Army Knife because apparently I have a thrift store inside of this thing.